this song and it will go right into the message. never done that since I've been here. Use a song like that to set up the message. But those birds are awesome. That is a, that brother, he's blind, but he ain't blind. Stevie ain't blind, y'all. Everybody say this. When you believe in things that you don't understand, then you suffer. Superstition ain't the way. Now, I used to hear that song all the time. And the words didn't mean what they mean to me now. Because by the time it warm up, y'all, I'll be finished. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Man. Subject today is... Why 
they gave us Christmas. Why they gave us Christmas. Now, in preparing for this message, let me, let me kind of just set the stage for you now. In preparing for this message, I realize that I'm going to I'm going to be very repetitive because a lot of the things I want to share with you I'm doing my best to put it in layman's terms because from a mental health perspective I'll be using words like psychological impairment I'll be using words like psychopathic and I want you to understand the meaning of these terms within the context of this message I'm sure many of y'all have heard recently that the Roman Catholic Church is a little bit upset right now because of the many churches that have decided to close their doors today so that people could spend this day with their families but I'm wondering why have churches decided to close their doors today? Because this is not the first time that December 25th fell on a Sunday. It has fallen on a Sunday many times before. So why all the fuss? Why is it that many major retail businesses have issued a mandate for their employees to not wish their customers a Merry Christmas? We're not just now getting foreigners in this country and you don't want to offend nobody. Foreigners have been here almost as long as we have. And people have not had a problem in the past saying Merry Christmas. In my personal opinion, brothers and sisters, I believe that the underlying cause of the so-called war on Christmas is because people are beginning to wake up as to why they gave us Christmas. Now, at the outset, let me state in a sentence. I'm going to elaborate it throughout the message, but let me state in a sentence why they gave us Christmas so that you're clear on that. And of course, this is my opinion, my little humble opinion. The reason why they gave us Christmas was to induce a psychological impairment that would result in a perpetual psychopathology, thus rendering those who are spiritual by nature, what did I just say? Those who are spiritual by nature, impotent in the defense of their own spiritual well-being. Let me say that for you again. I told you I'm going to repeat some of this, okay? The reason why they gave us Christmas was to induce a psychological impairment that would result in a perpetual, meaning an ongoing, psychopathology, thus rendering those of us who are spiritual by nature, rendering us impotent in the defense of our own spiritual well-being. If you have no power to defend yourself spiritually, then you won't have any power, period. Fortunately, we are living in an era in which people are exercising their God-given right to their freedom to think. Y'all, you know, we, could, we used to didn't have the freedom to think. I mean, even though we had it, we didn't use it because we would suffer 
psychological and spiritual abuse if you thought outside of the box. And still, in some churches, you better not think outside of the box. They'll label you a backslider. They'll label you a sinner on your way to hell. As a result of personal literary research, as a result of non-religious based publishing entities, as a result of teachers who are committed to the dissemination of historical facts instead of allegorical and mythological indoctrinations, people are slowly being resurrected and liberated from the comatose or zombified state of spiritual and cultural illiteracy. Now follow this number, Lord. Now look how long we're talking here. For 1,680 years. How many years did I just say? Oh, buddy. For 1,680 years, far too many people, especially our people, have been suffering from a psychological impairment called Christmas. Now, oh, let me break this down to you today, okay? That's right, I said a psychological impairment called Christmas. That's right. Now, as a mental health professional, in preparing this message, I had to go from that perspective. And I found out, brothers and sisters, and some of you might not agree with me because you don't want to admit to it, but to believe in Christmas is a form of mental illness. And when I finish breaking it down, you'll understand why I say that. To believe in Easter is a form of mental illness. I'm talking from the paradigm of our textbooks in psychiatric medicine. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. In fact, brothers and sisters, to believe in anything uh -huh. or to believe in anyone mm -hmm. that has no historical right. or archaeological yeah. evidence yeah. of its existence yeah. is a psychological impairment. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, technically speaking, a form of mental illness. Ah, it's getting ready to get gooder. <laughs> so that y'all might get a clear understanding of this message, I want you to understand, I'm not going to talk to y'all today from the perspective of superstition or religion. I'm speaking to you today from the paradigm of science and psychology. How many of y'all got your Bibles? If you do, turn right quick to Acts, the 7th chapter, I'm sorry, 17th chapter, 22nd verse. Acts 17, 22. Turn quickly. Acts is, Acts is in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the book of Acts comes after John, 17, chapter, verse 22. Would you read it for me, please? Then Paul stood. Then Paul stood. In the midst of Mars Hill. In the midst of Mars Hill. And said. And said. Ye men of Athens. You men of Athens. In other words, you Greeks. I perceive that in all things. I perceive that in all things you are what? You are too superstitious. You are too, what's that last word? Superstitious. Wait a minute, one more time, what's that last word? Superstitious. You soup, you too superstitious. <laughs> <laughs> you men of Athens, what country 
is the city of Athens in? This whole program that has been forced upon us comes from the Greco-Roman yeah. Empire. Yeah. Now, I don't know if anyone here has another version other than the King James Version. Anybody got an NIV? What, what, what do you have, Elder? Mine is Schofield, and it says, very religious. Uh-oh! <laughs> Say it a, lot, a little bit louder so everybody can hear what it says. It's, instead of the word superstitious, I, what word is there? I perceive that in all things, Ye are very religious. Thank you. Make a note of it in your books. In the biblical text, the word superstition and the word religion are the same thing. Y'all see it. When you believe in things, that you don't understand, yeah, then you suffer. Yeah. Superstition yeah. ain't the way. Right. When you believe in things that you don't understand, then you suffer. Yeah. Religion yeah. ain't the way. Yeah. Are y'all grabbing this? Yeah. Mm, 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 mm had to play that song. I just told y'all that for 1,680 years, almost two millenniums, far too many people, especially our people, have been suffering from a psychological impairment called Christmas. And as a result of this psychological impairment, which was programmed into us by the Euro-Gentile Greco-Roman Catholic Church, the world, the world now suffers from the most powerful psychopathology ever inflicted upon the human race. What do I mean by the terms psychological impairment? Mm -hmm. So did you follow me now? Mm -hmm. What do I mean by the term psychopathology? An uh -huh. application to why they gave us Christmas. Yeah. Let me define it for you from the medical dictionaries. A psychological impairment mm -hmm. is characterized by a pattern of persistently learning uh -huh. that which hinders or damages the spiritual, intellectual, and or emotional development of an individual. Did y'all hear what I said? In other words, I'll read it again. A psych psychological impairment, impairment is characterized by a pattern of persistently learning that which hinders or damages the spiritual, intellectual, and or emotional development of an individual. <laughs> Resulting in a below normal, unhealthy, or unrealistic Cognitive function. When you persistently learn a lie, yeah. 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 you become psychologically impaired. Yeah. Now, the term psychopathology uh -huh. is the study of the origin, development, and manifestations of behavior patterns and experiences which may be indicative of mental illness or psychological impairment. Psychopathology is when you study a person based on what they believe. That's what cognitive psychology is really all about. 
For example, the belief in and claims to a red-nosed reindeer <laughs> may be considered as a psychopathological sign. The belief in or claims of a jolly fat man in a red suit who rides through the night sky in his sleigh being pulled by flying reindeer, landing on rooftops and squeezing himself down a chimney that is 12 inches in diameter without dirtying his suit and delivering gifts to children who did not pout or cry and were not naughty but nice. The claim to this activity or the belief in such a thing or to even speak such a thing may be considered as psychopathological activity. Professionally speaking, the belief in bunny rabbits that lay different colored eggs may be considered as a psychopathological sign. Y'all ain't got no problem with what I'm saying, do you? I know you don't. For our past, we don't bleed that stuff anyway. Well, let me go a little deeper for you. The belief in or claims of a little white virgin born child wrapped in swaddling clothes. Check this out. Whose birth was so awesome that the stars in the sky changed their attitude. And summoned kings and wise men from the far east just to come look at him and pay homage to him and what's really deep about it is these men rode on camelback over a distance of almost 15,000 miles in less than two days. To believe such a thing as a therapist, as a psychologist, in my opinion, that's a psychopathological sign, and you suffer from mental illness. Brothers and sisters, the most powerful, now hear this very well, and in fact, repeat this after me, the most powerful, and most effective psychopathology is the belief in something simply because you want it to exist. Can I talk to you today? To believe in something that has no historical evidence to it. To believe in something that does not have any archaeological evidence to it. And yet you believe it to the point to where it's, even though it's not real, it becomes your reality. That's a mental illness. Yes, it is. I know some of you might not have thought about this that way. But that's what it is. To understand why they gave us Christmas, you must understand that they, meaning the pagans, to be more specific, the Euro-Gentile pagans, they psychologically induced the belief in a lie. Check this out now. And then after inducing the belief in a lie, they 
then glorified and glamorized the lie in such a way that it would create within us a desire and a longing for the existence of that lie. Let me run it back by you again. The reason why they gave us Christmas, the reason why they gave us Easter, the reason why they gave us Thanksgiving, the reason why they gave us Valentine's Day, you name it, but their two major religious holidays are Christmas and Easter. And the reason why they gave us this was to psychologically induce that lie into our psychoviscera. And how did they do that? They, they, glor no, they, they did it when we were children. Children are made to sit on Santa Claus's lap. Now, like I said on the radio this morning, I'm going to be honest with y'all. What I'm saying today, as far as I'm concerned, it has no bearing whatsoever to white folk. That's right. What I'm talking about came from the white man. This is their pagan practice. And if they want to practice that, then cool. That's them. It came from them. Maybe they find some kind of fulfillment in it. I don't know. But what I do know is it ain't for black folk. It's not from us. It's not for us. Why am I saying that? Because we're talking about pagan practices that were created by a non-spiritual people. And the most damaging thing you can do to a spiritual people is have them to suffer from a psychological impairment by taking on non-spiritual ways. Oh, this is making sense to y'all. I found out that too many black folk want the Christ mass of the Roman Catholic Church. Too many black folk long for the Christ mass of the Roman Catholic Church. Too many black folk crave for the Christ Mass. That's what it used to be called, y'all, before it was changed to Christmas. Guess what, y'all? In fact, our people who suffer from this psychopathology literally need it to exist. <coughs> they needed to exist, Pastor Ray, because their psychological impairment, their psychopathology demands it. I just told you that the most powerful and most effective psychopathology is the belief in something simply because you want it to exist. It doesn't exist, but you want it to. Now, remember that when you try to free your African brothers' and sisters' minds. When you try to let them know that they're believing in something that Greco-Roman bishops made up in the year 325 AD at the Nicene Council. When you try to tell them that and they attack you, understand that's their psychopathic behavior. They don't know it. And you know why they don't know it? Because the masses are suffering from the same psychological impairment. Oh, right. mm. The demand for the existence of the lie. Wow. Mm. Man. Mm. The demand.
demand from our people, black folk, black African people, the demand for the existence of the lie is so great, check it out, that many black people have absolutely no idea what they would do if it didn't exist. Black folk who are innately spiritual will tell you, I don't know what I'd do without Jesus. Oh, let me go here with you. I don't know what I'd do. Yeah. If, if it wasn't for Jesus. Mm. I was sharing with a brother just the other day, trying to talk with him. Now, as deep as he called me, <laughs> I didn't go to him. He, he came to me and asked me about his predicament. And as I began to share with him some stuff that his psychopathology would not allow, uh-huh. He said, brother, I don't care what you say. I started saying, what the hell you call me for then? If you don't care what I say, why waste my time? And he let me know, clear up. He said, he said brother, I don't care what you say. I know that Jesus lives. And I said to him, how do you know it, brother? Really, I mean, come on. You're talking with me on a systematic level. Now talk to me. How do you know this? And guess what he did? He started quoting a song to me. He said, because I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living. Whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, and I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. I had to be patient with him. I I had to be patient with him. Then he went on to say, because I'm waiting for the answer to my question. He went on to say, he lives, he lives. Y'all know the words of the song? What does the rest say? Christ Jesus lives today because he walks with me. He talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. Then he got to my question. He said, you ask me how I know he lives. Guess what he said? He said, because he lives within my heart. I said, thank you, brother. In other words, what you're telling me is it is the figment of your imagination. You have no scientific evidence. He lives within your heart. And I'm going to leave it right there with you. Because I can't mess with that. If that's what you think, then cool. But that doesn't stand up. No. In the courtroom of my mind. He lives within my heart. <laughs> yeah, it is deep. Well, needless to say, I'm the one who got attacked. As a result of this type of demand, this psychopathic demand those who do not suffer from this psychological impairment or those who have been delivered from this psychological impairment of believing in that which does not exist. Those who have been delivered from such are cast aside by those who have not been delivered. Those who have been delivered and do not suffer with this psychological impairment are shunned by those who do suffer with it. Those who do not suffer with this psychological impairment are criticized by those who do suffer with it. And those who do no longer suffer from this psychopathological behavior are often even outright attacked by those who still suffer from such. Yes, a state of war exists. 
in the minds of those who suffer this psychopathology against anyone, anyone who would try to free their mind from their psychological impairment. One of the biggest problems, one of the most difficult situations that we have to deal with in the realm of mental health is trying to help a person who suffers from mental illness. You know why? Because they don't know that they're mentally ill. They really don't know. They look normal. They got good jobs, good families, riding fine cars, and are suffering a mental illness. I'm gonna be totally honest with y'all, especially those of you who are listening to me who fit what I'm saying. Y'all need to put in an insurance claim. <laughs> Shucks, y'all need to take some sick time off work. I mean, in any, any other case, if you're suffering from a mental illness, you can go on disability. I'm serious. According to the dictionary of medicine, to believe in something that does not historically or archaeologically exist, there's no evidence for it, that is mental illness. Try putting that claim in. <laughs> Let's take a glimpse at history now and perhaps see where these solstice traditions come from. Well, the first thing you need to know is long before a so-called virgin-born savior called Jesus came in on the scene from the minds of the Roman Catholic Church. For millennia, thousands of years, midwinter has always been a time of celebration for billions of people around the world, long before the Nicene Council in 325 AD came up with the declaration or the decree that December 25th was to be the day of celebrating the birth of their Romanized virgin-born baby Jesus. People of the world rejoiced when the winter solstice arrived on December 21st. And the reason why they rejoiced is because he would, again now please understand, we're not talking about Africans. They didn't, suck, they didn't practice these pagan practices. We're talking about the Euro-Gentile pagans who practiced these pagan practices. And I'm going to tell you why. They would freak out every year. They'd bug out because the sun, see, see they didn't understand the, 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 the Earth's solar orbit. They didn't understand the axial tilt of the earth and the movement of the sun upon it. They didn't grab all. See, you got to remember, y'all, white folk Come on, right. thought that the earth was flat yes. up until 1492. Y'all yeah. 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 follow what I'm saying? That's, they, they, they thought if they sail way out there, they'd fall off the edge of the earth. They didn't know it was round. As recent as 1492. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Lord have mercy. So not understanding the orbital path of the earth and the axial tilt of the earth and how the sun would hit it, the closer it got to winter, it looked like the sun was moving farther away. So the days became shorter and shorter and shorter and the nights became longer. And especially being up, up north, no sunlight, it got colder and colder and colder. So these European pagan Gentiles, they honestly believed that the sun was leaving them. And on December 21st, it looked like the sun stopped going farther away and stopped. 
and made a U-turn and start coming back this way. And they got so happy about that. That's called the winter solstice. They got so happy about it that they began to celebrate. It became a time of celebration. Why did it become a time of celebration? Because the Son of God or God's Son had become the light of the world. Y'all hear me? The sun that seemingly stopped in its motion died. And for three days, it didn't move. Then it rose again on the third day. Y'all getting this thing? So the pagans worshipped something called Mithra. Oh, yeah. Write it down. M-I-T-H-R-A. Mithra, which was the Persian sun god. Now, let me drop something on y'all because Mithra dates back thousands of years before so-called Jesus Christ. The Persians taught that Mithra was born of a virgin on December 25th. Y'all hear me? The Persians taught that when Mithra was born, that his birth was witnessed by shepherds and magicians or something called the Magi or Magi. Mithra, long before Jesus, the Persians taught that he raised the dead, that he healed the sick, that he cast out demons. Mithra was taught that he ascended to heaven shortly after the vernal equinox or what we know as Easter. But before doing this, he had a final supper with his 12 disciples. Of course, each disciple represents a sign of the zodiac. The winter solstice, why did they give us Christmas? Again, to induce into the psychology of a people who are spiritual by nature, a belief system, a pagan practice that would make impotent yeah. Yeah, yeah. those of us who are spiritual by nature. So what people are calling Christmas is really nothing more than the pagan practices of worshiping the sun god Mithra that the Roman Catholic Church incorporated or stole or copied from them and called it Christmas. The winter solstice, now check this out y'all. The winter solstice was the season to be jolly. <laughs> As celebrated in ancient Rome. This festival was called and still is called Saturnalia. Right. Write it down. S A T U R N A L I A. Saturnalia, the celebration of it began on December 17th. This was the time. Now, check out the deepest thing. During the festival of Saturnalia, this was the time when slaves were no longer slaves. They were allowed to play the role of being the master. That's right. That's right. Everything in life was easy and therefore it became a role reversal day or a role reversal holy day. Now this is really deep because in the festival of Saturnalia, all classes, whether you were rich or poor, master or slave, guess what y'all? they exchanged gifts with one another. Y'all hear me? Not only did they exchange gifts, 
but it was the time of having family feasts together. Does this sound familiar? You want to know where our practices come from? You want to know why we exchange gifts on Christmas? It comes from the festival of Saturnalia. Uh -huh. Now, I know somebody don't like what I'm saying. Pal, you messing up my Christmas. Good. <laughs> Good. It's not our day of celebration. Saturnalia was a time of gentle, I'm sorry, general merriment. It wasn't Merry Christmas. It was Merry Saturnalia. People would participate in games, giving of gifts, abundance of sweet meat. Sweet meat. Like honey cured ham. <laughs> or honey glazed ham, however you want to call it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and as typical with ceremonious events, they also did something else that let them know it was the festival of Saturnalia. It was called candle burning. Ride down the street and see the candles in the window. Where, why do people put candles in their window? They don't know. Have no idea. It's part of the Christmas decoration for they, in the stores. I'm buying these candles, I'm putting them in my window, not even realizing where this comes from. In general, the whole purpose of the festival of Saturnalia was for everybody to have a good time. It was the greatest holiday of the Roman year. So when people say Merry Christmas, like I say, brothers and sisters, they are really perpetuating this pagan celebration. They just don't know that they are. The word Christmas derives, as I told you, from Christus Massis. The Roman church's standard ritual celebration. Well, do you believe that Christmas is in the Bible? I ain't talking to y'all now, I'm talking to y'all listening to me on television or watching me now. You believe it's in the Bible? Where? You might be surprised to discover that there's absolutely not one mention of Christmas anywhere in the Christian scriptures. There is no call to observe Christmas in the scriptures. There's not one example in the Bible of the observance of Christmas. In fact, let me share with you what the Roman Catholic Church said. In the New Catholic Encyclopedia, write this down, volume three, page 656. Go check it out for yourself. The New Catholic Encyclopedia says these words, and I quote, inexplicable though it seems, the date of the Messiah's birth is not known. The Gospels indicate neither the day nor the month. End of quote. The people who gave us this lie, see that's what I'm trying to tell you. The people who gave us the lie know it's a lie. But yet the people to whom the lie was given to will fight you tooth and nail in defense of it. Put you out of there, put, put that. You ain't my child no more, get out. Put you out the house. Leave, the, leave my home, leave here. Say to the Lord rebuke you. The blood of Jesus is against you. That's some deep, that is a serious psychological impairment. Something that doesn't exist to the point to where you want to distance yourself from your own flesh and blood. In case you didn't know it, brothers and sisters, 
Christmas was banned in England in 1645. They vowed to rid the country of corruption and to do this they stopped Christmas. But when Charles II was restored to the throne, he reinstated it. For those who don't know, Christmas was banned in Boston, Massachusetts from 1659 to 1681 Christmas was totally forbidden yes, and anyone who was seen celebrating what they knew was a pagan ritual was charged with five shillings yes, after the American Revolution however Christmas was reinstated but guess what it wasn't until June of 1870 that Christmas became a federal holiday. They, when I say why they gave us Christmas, who is they? The pagans who are void of spirituality gave us Christmas and Easter. And the reason why they gave it to us, I'll tell you again, so that we who are spiritual by nature would adopt their ways and desire a fabrication, desire a fabrication to be our reality. Look at the person next to you say, anytime, anytime. you long for, you long for. a lie to be your reality, you are suffering from mental illness. Now I'm glad you said that, Shirley. Shirley said, you're crazy. Because see, the problem with mental illness doesn't necessarily mean that you're crazy. Follow how this goes. Follow what I'm saying. And in fact, it's, it's like the man who, he was, he had a flat tire in front of an insane, insane asylum. So the man got out to change his tire. The tire broke down right in front of an insane asylum. So he got out to change his tire, right? And you know how when you take the lugs off the wheel, you put them in your hubcap, you know? So when the man took his tire, the flat tire, off the rim and was getting ready to put the, the inflated spare back on, on the wheel, his foot kicked the hubcap. Yeah. And the lugs went down into the storm drain. Yeah. So the man is standing there saying, man, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Oh, man. So there was this man in the insane asylum. <laughs> looking through the bars of the window. He said, excuse me, why don't you just take one love off of the other three wheels and use it to put hold the tire till you can get to a gas station. And so the man with the flat tire looked at him and said, that's an insane asylum. Why not think of that? How'd you think of that? Ain't you crazy? So the man looked at him and said, just because I'm crazy don't mean I'm stupid. <laughs> Shucks, man. A lot of people who are classified as mentally unstable got a lot of sense. A lot of people who are suffering from this psychological impairment are wearing robes. Standing in the position I'm standing in now as a teacher, perpetuating this psychological impairment on the masses. Mm. Brothers and sisters, as I close, I plead with you and I, 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 I plead with you today with a certain sense of excitement.
because I'm beginning to see more and more the resurrecting of minds that have suffered from psychological impairment. I see people being healed because they're beginning to use their African minds and experiencing freedom or they're freeing the dawn. Yeah. So my closing plea to you is let us forsake these anti-spiritual practices. Let us forsake these anti-African practices. Let us forsake these unholy pagan practices. Please, let us forsake these Euro-Gentile practices and redeem our African selves. Please, let's do that. In the name of God, in the name of our ancestors, and for the sake of our children. Yes. Parents, don't let the children dictate to you what you should be doing. Well, mommy, can I have a tree? Everybody else got one. Mommy, can we do this? Can I get a Halloween costume? Can I go Easter egg hunting? See, y'all, we live in a different society now. I, I, I'm hearing too many parents ask the children, what do you want to do? I ain't know nothing about that when I was growing up. I don't ever remember Eileen Gilmore asking me, what do you want to do? <laughs> she never asked me no stuff like that. Even after I became well in my teens, she didn't ask me no stuff like that. Now children who are not prepared to even make wise decisions are being offered choices by parents because you want to be a friend more than you want to be a parent. God didn't call you to be a friend to your child. God gave you that gift for you to be a parent to that child and prepare them for adulthood. Ashe. Ashe.